I'm Dr. Ann Kahn, and today we're going to talk about your brain on grief. Well, grief isn't just an emotion, it's a neurological process, and your brain is doing the hard work of love. Let's talk about why loss feels so disorienting and why it takes time to heal. Here's what's really happening in your brain with someone you love dies. Let's start with the key takeaways grief versus grieving. Grief is the acute pain, the emotional response immediately after the loss. But grief is an ongoing process of adaptation to the reality that the loved one is actually gone. Um, and this, this is a process, it takes a while. So the brain actually predicts um, the future and predicts our reality to help us adapt to our environment. And our brains are predicting that we're going to see our loved one. They're, we're going to receive a text from them, a phone call, and it predicts that they'll be home waiting for us. So when someone dies, the brain struggles to update that internal model and continues to expect to see the person, to receive calls and text, and that causes the feelings of disbelief um, that we're not seeing and hearing from them, and, and you know, we're longing for them and dreaming about them. And so the adaptive nature of our brain has to adjust to this new reality. What we predict is going to happen doesn't happen and we have to get used to that and our bodies and minds get used to that. Our attachment system is involved in grieving. The same thing that helps us bond with others is now confused because we're, we're searching for them. The, you know, grieving is hard work but our brains do adapt. Why does grief feel so strange? The brain simply doesn't know that the person is gone and so our, we learn through time and experience about our new circumstances. And there's a big learning curve. At first it feels um, surreal and this is why it can reemerge. The grief can abruptly reemerge when we enter circumstances, for example, when we expect to see the person and they're not there. And that can even happen after a long time. But our brain again is highly adaptive and then we are reminded that they're not there and we go through the entire adaptive process again but much faster this time because we've learned that they're not there. Talk about individual differences in grief. There's no one size fits all and no timeline. Some adapt quickly and others take years. Complicated or prolonged grief can result when the brain's adaptation process gets stalled or stuck for a number of reasons. When it takes longer, it's not a failure, it's just that there are complexities to the situation. Grief affects not only mood, but sleep, appetite, the immune system, and even heart health. Community and rituals help the brain update its model and reinforces the reality of, its, of the lost, and that's why it's important for us to have others around us when we're grieving. The hopeful message here is that grief is an active and adaptive process, and the brain has a remarkable capacity for resilience and integration. Understanding the neuroscience behind grief can help reduce stigma and support healing. As there's a science of loss. And grief is not a weakness or a disorder. The the brain is doing the hard work of love and the feelings of disorientation are natural and they're rooted in how our brains function.